It's midweek, and apologies for the late start of the show. We're uh, through, and uh, we overcame our technical challenges. The show is on it's sports today and is only here on the Joy Sports channel on Multi TV. And we will be looking at a range of issues, including that very impressive feat chalked by the local black stars who have qualified into uh, the next stage of the competition, which is the quarterfinals of the Chan tournament ongoing in South Africa. It was after that 1-0 victory, uh, the hard-fought one indeed, over Ethiopia through a penalty kick. Let's uh, also talk about the Australian Open, where we've seen major, major surprises. Remember, Serena Williams is out, Victoria Azarenka is out, uh, the man Novak Djokovic is also out. Uh, so uh, <laughs> there promises to be even stiffer competition as the tournament gets into its final stages. So we'll be talking about that as well. Uh, there are some Ghanaian players abroad who are making major, major movements as well uh, during this period, making an attempt to, uh, you know, get the attention of uh, Black Stars coach Kwesiapia. We're also continuing to take tributes for the departed Komla Dumo as we celebrate his life and uh, his work and his achievements uh, right here on the show. So we'll also be talking um, you know, uh, some boxing as well, some international sport as well. A mixture of all of these right here. Remember, it's interactive and uh, we're always big on your views. It's 1760 for text. And also, if you want to paste, uh, paste a comment on social media, uh, get on my wall. Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto, let's get going. Now we're asking the realistic question. Can the local Black Stars win the Chan tournament now that they've gotten out of this very tough group? What kind of quality have they shown to prove that if you think that they're going to get into the final stages and uh, probably win this competition uh, for the very, very first time. So your views are very welcome. Get on my Facebook wall, Nathaniel Atta, Citizen Atta, and let's do some sport. It's one hour and 30 minutes, so the show is on. Uh, some commercials, and we go straight into the big headlines in today's newspapers. Okay, so um, there we are here on the show. Uh, there are a couple of stories making the headlines in the 90 Minutes and in the Graphic Sports newspaper as well. Um, Samuel Eto says he is on fire. Let's now uh, quickly just take a look at what's on the uh, 90 Minutes newspaper. Samuel Eto featured there. Remember, he is the hat-trick king of the weekend after delivering those three goals that ensured a big win for Chelsea over Manchester United. There we are. And Van Persie says he won't quit United for Barcelona. There we are. And uh, Isaac Vossa also bounces back for Red Bull Salzburg. And Frank Ribery faces Jill over prostitution. Okay, now let's get into the center spread immediately. And there we are. There's a big pull-up of uh, Emmanuel Frimpong, the Dench. And, of course, uh, Lucas Podolski, big mates at Arsenal. Um, Emmanuel Frimpong looking for a move away from the Gunners so he can get good playing time. Had his first opportunity to play for the Black Stars at the Barbara Stadium where he donned the number six jersey for Ghana. Uh, did a pretty good job, if you ask me. Let's also get into the uh, graphic sports newspaper. The graphic sports is also here. And the stars for the quarters, everybody's talking about the Chan tournament, including the graphic sports. And, of course, Sule Ali Montari could be making a move to Hull City in the English Premier League. You know the reason why? Because Steve Bruce, the manager, uh, has been talking about him, and uh, there could be a possible reunion. Steve Bruce uh, worked with Montari at Sunderland, where the club won the FA Cup. Let's also get into the um, other pages in the newspaper. Joe Hart is featured. He is the man with the sweetheart. So there we are. The safe pair of hands. A man who appreciates good style. And uh, also makes a lot of time to relax with those very dear to his heart. All right, so let's now get into uh, some more of the news. Um, now, there's a, a feature here which says, Breaking the Invincibility of Sepp Blatter. Okay, you'd want to take a read of that. 
you'd really want to take a read off that. Let's also uh, look at the big highlights of Chan 2014. Morocco in there, South Africa in there, Nigeria also in there. Nigeria looking very, very good at the moment. And of course, uh, Nigeria, they are led by Coach Stephen Keshi, who won the main tournament, the, the AFCON tournament, which was held on the same, uh, in the same uh, country in South Africa a year ago. And now he's looking for more honors. And uh, Accra Hearts of Oak say that they will reverse the decision uh, of the status committee of the Ghana FA, which asked the club to pay Coach David Duncan 86,500 Ghana cities in compensation. So let's see how all of that goes it is uh, beginning to look or sound like a very big, um, you know, battle which is yet to end. And, of course, uh, there we are, Stanislas Warwinka. He was the man who ended Novak Djokovic's uh, reign in the ongoing Australian Open. And they've been bigger consideration are uh, bigger uh, surprises as well. Manchester United are considering a record bid for Yuan Mata. All right, so there is uh, more. Just uh, grab a copy of the uh, graphic sports newspaper. Uh, there's a story here which says princesses poised to see Canada. So uh, the black princesses, the national and uh, 20 women's football team are really looking forward to making it and they are playing the final qualifier. Uh, which will determine to a large extent what happens in the tournament uh, this weekend. Remember, the gates will be free. There will be no gate fees. So let's get there to across, the Accra Sports Stadium in our numbers and just make sure that we, uh, we put our support behind the Black Princesses. Let's now get into the Chan highlights. Let's see how the local Black Stars were able to do it. Let's see how uh, the other teams also fared in the last round of matches that were played yesterday. And get on our Facebook wall, get on my Facebook wall and tell me um, whether you think that now realistically um, it is looking good for the local Black Stars to win the um, tournament, the Chan tournament ongoing in South Africa. Uh, remember that the local Black Stars, they won by a goal to nil uh, against uh, Ethiopia yesterday in the last round of matches in the group stage. And now it's a quarterfinal berth for the local Black Stars. Remember, Ghana has never won the Chan uh, tournament ever. And uh, this is uh, the time. Many think that this is the time to win it. But there are other strong contenders like Mali, like Nigeria, and all, who are also targeting the very big uh, Chan trophy. So um, let's now uh, take a look at how it all happened, uh, you know, in the last round of matches yesterday uh, that were played in the group stages. All right, we're having um, a few challenges to bring you that. We'll be doing that in a bit. But remember that coming up later on, uh, the, of the drummer, uh, the, the official drummer of the Black Stars, has also been talking his views about, you know, the, the, the local Black Stars and the performances there uh, so far. And um, we'll be li taking a listen to him in a bit as well. Uh, he's been expressing his views about what should be done in the local Black Stars team to ensure that, you know... Um, Everything goes well, and the team performs at its peak. But the only thing I want to tell them, they have to fight hard. Because them are, as they score the goals, the, the goal scoring is not good at all. Because when they score one, and the opponent equalizes their goal, no, definitely it will be, it, it be disaster. No, definitely, I want them to score two, three, before the, uh, how do you call it, the opponent will take, when he score one, or the opponent score two, uh, definitely you still you are leading him. No, when you score one, then you cannot score anything again. Then when the, the people came inside the game, it will be disaster. The only thing I will tell them, the players, the coach tell them what they do. Them two, they, they have to fight hard to the, our motherland. And I hope that these guys are coming right now, which is uh, 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 Ethiopia. Ethiopians. You know? They are coming with the lion den. You got me? Because this thing happened as, uh, before. We go to uh, Greece, uh, which is uh, Olympic game. We, we, we draw all our two matches. I remain one match where them, themselves, 
they never win any match. And that match between Ghana and Japan, we thought we would give them the umbrella man. But before we realized, we are fire is where to. You see me? So the only thing I want to tell them, they should fight hard at all costs. Today, they should bury, uh, how do you call it, uh, the opponent for us. Then the Ghanaians to enjoy today. Because today is the last day for Ghana. Well, they, they, we don't want to draw. If we draw, and this go to the winner, still they will, they will travel from the place where they did. They, they. Well, we want them to stay with the supporters. Let the supporters support them. You know that at the time, Cobra Jimbo was the Joy FM. During 1995, uh, Joe FM opened there, 1996. Cobra Jimbo is the one, is the one who is coming to uh, present, uh, how do you call it, uh, Tom Anam Forcing. No, definitely, I know Cobra Jimbo because uh, uh, 2004, two, uh, 94, 96, 97, during Adu Adukoka time, uh, he, he is the one I do program with him to fire Adukoka in Joe FM. The first time we program for Joe FM. That is me and Cobra Jimbo in a uh, uh, former Gaka office in Accra Sports Studio. No, Cobra Jimbo, the, uh, it, it, it's long life and prospect somebody. Okay, so let's now take a look at the fixtures for today, which matches to be expecting for uh, today in the ongoing Chan tournament. All right, so uh, we'll be doing that uh, very, very shortly. We'll be doing that um, in a bit. And uh, this is how it's looking like on the table now, out of the, the Group C table where Ghana is. Ghana topped the group with seven points, and uh, Libya finished uh, with five points. Libya also threw, and uh, Congo, Brazzaville, uh, you know, had four points. And Ethiopia left the tournament with, without a point. But Ethiopia it seemed to be on, on the, the curve of building uh, a team, and uh, for me, I I'll just say that uh, kudos once again to Coach Silnet Bishao and his boys. Uh, they always give a very good account of themselves, always fighting hard to get the results. Uh, but I'm very sure that all of these are going to pay off in, in, in future tournaments. And, um, you know, Coach Silnet Bishao doing a lot. Uh, he used to be a teacher, uh, a high school teacher in Ethiopia. Now he's as uh, ascended to the position of uh, head coach of the Ethiopian uh, national uh, football team. So um, also in the other groups we see uh, Mali uh, and Mali, uh, Mali topping the group um, uh, against Nigeria in group A. Remember it's um, uh, seven points for Nigeria, uh, seven points for Mali, I beg your pardon, and also uh, Nigeria finished with six points. South Africa, uh, the host uh, were kicked out and uh, they finished with uh, four points. Mozambique did not have a point. And of course, when you go to Group B, it's uh, Morocco finishing with five points, same as Zimbabwe, who also had five points. Of course, Morocco had a superior goal advantage of two. Uganda uh, out of the tournament uh, with four points. And of course, Burkina Faso, they had one point. Now, uh, uh, Group D, uh, there will be matches uh, played later today. And of course, Burundi are in pole position now with uh, four points and two goals uh, as an advantage. Gabon have four points. Uh, they do not have a goal advantage. Uh, DR Congo, uh, also their DR Congo, previous winners of this uh, very prestigious tournament. Remember that they won the very first edition at the expense of Ghana in Cote d'Ivoire. And uh, DR Congo is in third place with three points. And Mauritania uh, don't have a point at all. So this is how it's looking like in Group D. Now, um, with Group D, uh, Burundi, Gabon, and DR Congo all have a chance to qualify to uh, the next stage of the competition. Okay, so uh, keep your messages coming in. Get on my Facebook wall, paste something there as we continue to pay tribute to uh, Komla Dumo, uh, who uh, departed Earth uh, during the weekend. Let's also uh, take a look at what's happening with the local black stars who are on the verge of um, making it into the semifinals if they are able to win uh, their next game, uh, you know, that will be, that will be uh, determined very shortly after the final round of uh, matches are played in the group stages later today. Uh, so we'll see who the local Black Stars will be playing 
in the uh, next stage, which is the quarterfinals. Let's now uh, take a look at some more stories here. The Youth and Sports Minister, the Deputy Youth and Sports Minister, uh, Joseph Yamin, has been speaking to Joy Sports uh, about a range of issues. And uh, our cameras caught up with him after he had an interview at our sister station, as Empire FM. You cannot have a drastic change. It has to be a process. I think that um, um, in the medium term, what we should be doing is to look at another stream of funding because it's obvious that uh, government alone cannot support um, um, development of sports. And we look at models, what happens in other countries. You see Great Britain uh, some years ago when they um, performed very miserably in the Olympics or so, they put together the sports lottery and that became a source of income. So we need to look at what has been working in other countries. We need to look at the legal regime. The processes of companies getting tax rebates whenever they sponsor is very, very cumbersome. We need to streamline that and that is where the sports law comes in. The sports law we've been talking about for ages and it's just not happening. Um, why are we unable to just pass the sports law? What is keeping us from making it a priority, putting pressure on the Select Committee on Sports so that we can work on those documents and ensure that Parliament gives the green light for it to be passed? Um, I think to be fair to the committee, um, um, this time you cannot say it's their fault. Um, what happened was that it went to... Um, cabinet, there were issues and it was referred to a team of consultants and therefore it, it, it overstayed the duration of the old parliament and when that happens it means you need to start the process all over again it has to go back to cabinet and cabinet will look at it and then it will go back to parliament and now because of the issues that have come about and the issues have got to do with the funding regime there are some who are of the opinion that we should, we should send the law and leave the funding regime to be dealt with separately. The funding regime is that the kind of benefits and taxes and sources of funding for sports. Should it be part of the sports law? Some people strongly believe that if we are passing a sports law, then the funding regime should be part of it. Now, there is no consensus on what the funding regime will be. So that has been the major delay. And others think that let's go and pass a sports law and then we can look at the funding regime. I believe that we should just add the funding regime and deal with it. And so now we are in the process of engaging. And you know, sometimes too, when you give these things to consultants, sometimes it takes a little bit of time. I have written memos and I've given a deadline that this quarter, this quarter, I want to see the sports law going to cabinet. Okay. Then when so it goes this, to cabinet, this deadline has gone to who exactly? The, the 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 administration that is the chief director because they have to follow up with the consultants. I'm told that the consultants there's been some okay, delay. So these, these consultants are away from from the parliamentary select committee. Exactly. Okay. So they and 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 budget. and getting them on board became necessary because the committee is no, stretched with work. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Um, when the the ministry has to prepare the documentation. Now, it's a legal document. And so when we don't have that capacity, you give it to a consultant working with the AGES department. They put it together, they bring it back, we make the necessary inputs, AGES department. For instance, as I'm speaking to you now, we have the youth bill right here. We just sent it to the AG. She's brought her comments. We'll take it back. She gives final approval. Then it will, be, it will go to cabinet. Cabinet will look at it when they approve it. Then it goes to parliament. So in this instance, the consultant and one more stage is to have the stakeholders meeting, which I've said that this quarter it must happen. We bring the stakeholders together, look at all the issues, then we package it, send it to cabinet. It goes to cabinet, cabinet approves it, then it goes to parliament. Then parliament will look at it, and then it will be passed. So it is a priority for us this year that we're going to have the sports law passed this year. The sports law, the youth bill, those are priorities for us this year. On the 23rd of December, we held a stakeholders meeting at the conference center where we brought on board a number of uh, uh, government institutions and all the various stakeholders to begin planning for um, the Brazil 2014. And this issue 
has come up. Um, there are various committees that are looking at various scenarios, and I wouldn't want to preempt um, what uh, they'll finally come out with. Um, but the reality is that, yes, you definitely need some core of supporters to go because we cannot leave the players alone. Okay, so uh, that's rather the uh, sports minister. Uh, I had an earlier interview with you. Apologies for that uh, little uh, mix-up with the introduction there. So the youth and sports minister, you heard him. He says that the working document to run sports in this country has to be worked on this year, and uh, this is something that is a major priority for the ministry. So uh, the minister himself has said it. We'll be counting and we'll be uh, monitoring very, very closely so we see uh, what amount of work is done. And we surely are going to be asking the questions if uh, all of these are not done. He's also given uh, a first quarter uh, a timeline as well for these documents, uh, on, especially on the sports law, to be worked on. So uh, the youth and sports minister there, uh, he's been also talking about a range of issues, how uh, you know, uh, his outfit is preparing for Ghana's participation in Brazil. There's a message here. Um, Busumuru Sean Kingston, he says, uh, very, very poor performance from the stars yesterday. If this continues in the next stage, then we need to be shown the exit. More fire for Joy Sports. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that was um, a message there. You can also uh, send your uh, comments um, and uh, tell me uh, what you make of all the stories we've brought to you so far. Okay, so there we are. David Papu says, uh, Komla was just amazing. Uh, I'm still shocked. May he rest in peace. Now, that's from David Papo Jr. Thank you very much, David Papo. Now, Bismarck Arthur says, We can never stop mourning Komla Dumogon too soon. We mourn you and we wish you well. Uh, Kwame Apao uh, Bwedi um, says that um, what was impressive about their performance in the match against Ethiopia? Well, I don't see them progressing beyond the quarters. Rest in peace, uh, Komla. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Kwame Apao Bwedi. Um, Komola Fe, Emmanuel Ulu. Oluwashun, he says that it's sad that Azarenka, the defending champion, is out and uh, Murray is at his best to win it. As for the Chan, it's too early as they have just crossed a hurdle and while the lack of goals could also cost them. Thank you very much, uh, Komolafe, for that message. Silas Fegi says it was a mediocre performance from the boys, not catching, cutting edge up front. So, uh, so far, the messages that are coming in, uh, not, uh, you know, everybody's not really impressed with the local Black Stars team. So you tell us what you make of it. Is this a time to say that uh, we can be aiming for the title after overcoming that very difficult hurdle in the game? And they always say that whether or not um, you played the better game, take all your chances and, and, and convert them. So uh, that is what makes a team. But is that what you out there think? Uh, sending your messages, paste your comments on my Facebook wall. Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto, let's get talking uh, some more. And of course, uh, we also had an interview, an earlier interview with uh, the FA's uh, communications director, Sani Dara, Ibrahim Sani Dara. He uh, spoke uh, about a range of issues. He also paid uh, tribute to Kamala Dumont and also uh, spoke about the uh, a story about Ghana playing a, a, a friendly uh, with, with Colombia, which uh, apparently is not uh, factual. In that statement, um, the FA has never, you know, joined in selection of players into any national team, and we are not about to start anytime soon. So that and publication in the graphic sports came to us as a surprise, so we needed to respond. And I think that in writing the story, the, the journalist got his facts quite twisted, or plainly speaking, wrong. Um, he asked the, the president the question of whether all players who are inactive will not be called to the national team. And inferred that, you know, the coach on his appointment has said that players who were not active will not be considered in the national team. And the president said that rule um, has got a caveat on it. And, and as he re-echoed what the coach actually said recently, in that there are two types of inactive, we might call it inactive players. There might be one. Uh, one group who do not have clubs at all, who are clubless. And there are others who have clubs and train regularly and sometimes even get playing time. Uh, some would also term them as inactive players. 
Now, the president said that, um, just like the coach had said earlier, he re-echoed the view that players who have clubs train regularly and even sometimes get playing time might be considered as compared to somebody who would, who does, who would not get any playing time or any training, you know, hard training time with his team because it's clubless. So the president was quick to point out that dichotomy. And that, you know, that statement went into a code that said that rule will be tampered with. Which means that rule of having, you know, um, players who are inactive will be tampered in, in that one aspect of it is that there are players who are inactive because they are not fielded regularly by their clubs as compared to somebody who's clubless. So we, we, we made that statement clear. And this has been stated by the coach consistently. And you remember just last it's month. Very well, what, what role do they play? We absolutely have no hands in selection of players. Otherwise, um, why would the coach be hired and be asked to account for his stewardship? Otherwise, if we select players, then we should be answerable when things go wrong. It's the reason why when you appoint a coach um, and his term comes to an end, you would want to examine his term and say that you did well. Otherwise, it's us working as the coaches. There will be no point. The coach said in a recent interview that he was surprised that no one interfered in the selection. The only thing that we do is when he presents a list to us, we'll ask him why this player and why not that player. Why do you want to know? Of course. You trust him. You've given him a job. Yes. In, in those circumstances, you have to be sure that when you go to the public and the public asks these similar questions, would be on a strong footing to understand and be able to defend it. So it's the only reason why we do it. And even, even maybe sometimes, you even want to be assured that the coach has called the best players. Whilst he's monitoring, he's the man in charge, sometimes you also think that, oh, maybe there's somebody who was also doing well. Why did he not consider? So he can give you the reasons. When the reasons go, go down well, yes, we, we accept it. Well, there are various ways you communicate with the public. Do you want to hail your coach head first to the media all the time? Sometimes the coach must have the peace of mind to want to operate. Sometimes it is not everything that the coach must answer to. Sometimes he might want to do something that he wants to keep in-house. So if we have the understanding, we are satisfied. Sometimes maybe there's a disciplinary action taken against a player that is supposed to be in-house that the coach won't want to, you know, speak about it publicly. These are some of the things and the reasons why sometimes we need an understanding, not to interfere, but also to be able to stand at a point where we can explain clearly to the public why such decisions have been taken. There have been moments where people think that, oh, why didn't you choose this player? But when the coach gives you an explanation, you appreciate it. You appreciate it that he's the man in charge of the job. At the end of the day, if something goes wrong, he's the person to be held responsible and he's the person whose head would be on the when chopping block. We have appreciated it. Anytime he's given us an explanation, we appreciate his explanation and we go along with it. Giving him the opportunity to monitor his players and um, he's working on the FIFA deadlines. So if, the F if FIFA sets its deadline for you know, the publication or the presentation of the names, it's when um, he must meet the de that deadline. So far, it's what we are reading on the Montenegrin FA's website. Officially, um, the communications department of the FA has not been informed that this is the situation. If that is indeed the situation, the, the general secretary of the FA will inform us and will duly inform the public. You remember just last week, uh, Colombia also came out to say they were playing Ghana. So take your time, relax. When we have reached a deal that is, you know, agreeable to Ghana Football Association, we will make it public. In, in football, many, many things happen. In football, like I say, many, many things happen. The Colombian FA, for instance, have some great names who help in the running of the league, like Faustino Aspira. Yet la just last week, they had, they, they had made public statements that they were playing Ghana. So this happens in football. It's the reason why we want to take our time to do everything and announce firm conclusions, not conjecture. Friendly matches are essentially arranged by one deciding that this opponent will suit me 
or would suit my plan. For instance, if you want to play Senegal, you might need a team that looks similar to Senegal, their style of play, their mentality. So you, maybe the, the agent might approach you or you approach an, an agent and say, I want to play this country. Would you be able to arrange it for me? They put it together. It's, it's the same way. We can assure you that we'll give the Black Stars world quality training um, before the World Cup. That is for certain. All right, so you heard it. Uh, the uh, FA spokesperson, Ibrahim Sanidara, talking about a range of issues, including um, that of the, the, you know, that story uh, in the graphics post last week about uh, the, upper, the, the interference in player selection by the FA's uh, leadership. And uh, he says that uh, it's been taken out of context. Well, we showed you the graphic sports uh, the other time where uh, the, 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 it had been placed on that page, that, that story had been brought back, republished, and also uh, placed the uh, FA's reaction to it. So it was left out there for you, the public, to judge. Let's go ahead. Let's do some more. And, of course, uh, more tributes have been pairing, pair, pouring in for uh, Komla Dumo. Remember that, uh, that there are many who worked with him and came across him uh, from uh, the sporting fraternity as well. Let's first take a listen to um, Ibrahim Sanidara, who speaks for the Ghana FA. The Ghana Football Association is deeply saddened by the passing of Komla Dumo. Komla was a great friend of Ghana football, he was a good supporter of the Black Stars, and for many a times he could not hide his loyalties. Uh, I remember a clip of him at the World Cup in 2010. He had to take off his shirt and jacket, and underneath was the Black Stars jersey. So it tells you that he was a patriot. He sold Ghana in its pristine, pure quality, um, in a way that the Black Stars sell the country. And we want to use this opportunity to send our um, utmost co condolences to his fa family, his, his wife and his kids, his friends, and uh, may the Lord keep him. We've lost a great man, and we hope that the good things that Komla was able to do of a millions and millions of Ghanaians to follow in his footsteps. All right. The tributes, and of course, uh, we also had a chat with Deputy Youth and Sports Minister um, Joseph Yamin as well. Um, I met him in South Africa in 2010. Personally, we've been speaking, I mean, uh, as politicians, we'll definitely be talking to. I mean, big guys in the media front, and uh, so we spoke to him once. But I met him personally in South Africa during the World Cup. Um, when we, after our second match, we, we went to Mandela's house. He was just around, and we saw him. We had some few chats with him. What kind of person was he? Well, he was a nice guy, a gentleman, straight to the point. Um, wants to put out the issues as it is. I remember uh, break, breaking a story uh, far away in time uh, when the, the then DC who was uh, contesting for the parliamentary uh, candidature, that is uh, Joe Dankwa, had illegally connected about 17 towns uh, to the national grid without uh, meters. And so this issue was... Um, reviewed by one uh, journalist called Francis Dodovi, and the Joy FM was the, the anchor of this news uh, to the extent that it has to uh, ensure that Parliament sends a delegation to Tyne District to find out whether indeed um, uh, such a thing was happening, which indeed they came back and he reported to the whole world that indeed 17 towns were connected without uh, meters and they had used electricity for one year without paying just because a politician wanted to to, to, to win power, which eventually he won uh, and became the MP for the area. And so, uh, with such a person who wants to get deep down to the, the grassroots of every issue and want to let the public know, especially with this issue about, is it about Senate or something, where he fought, I mean, uh, to get the truth out. Governor was a nice man, and uh, I think we've lost a great person. Not only was he doing talk shows, he was very interested in. Um, 
in sports as well. Uh, I didn't know him much about sports, and uh, I wasn't also into sports as at that time. I was just doing my politics as usual. But uh, he was very particular when um, uh, he gets to the turn of uh, the presentation of sports. And uh, I didn't know which team he was supporting, though, but um, he seems to have some interest in Kumasi Asante Kotoko that uh, every Sunday after, after the league matches, we want to find out the scores of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. I mean, um, clearly, uh, I see him to be somebody who really uh, admired football and followed football uh, as well as sports itself. And see him in, the, in, in the South Africa reporting for BBC, as well as also his last test message, which indicated that he was also the one to report from Brazil. I think that um, really he has some interesting sports as well. And so there we are. This is the uh, message from the Honorable Youth and Sports Minister. I'll be reading some more of your text messages. Uh, Araj Dean says, uh, Eto all the way, but Chelsea should not sell Mata to United because uh, they refuse selling Rooney to the Blues. Okay, so um, there it is. Another message says, uh, this one is from Nana Kwesi Safo. He says, the performance of the local black stars was uh, not the best. Um, okay, um, rest in peace, uh, Komla Dumo. Okay, uh, there is more. There is more here. Um, there are more messages uh, coming in. I'll be sharing some more of them with you as well. But let's also uh, do a bit on the upcoming FIFA World Cup because uh, everybody wants to travel to Brazil to watch the FIFA World Cup. And, of course, there are travel packages that have been made available. African Origin Travel and Tours uh, has packages that have been made available for the uh, local, uh, the, for their travel to uh, Brazil. So uh, Joy Sports caught up with uh, Samson Dean, who is the CEO of African Origin Travel and Tours, for uh, a more insight into what, what is being done to make sure that uh, fans travel to Brazil, have the best of experiences, and come back safely as well. Just give you whatever information that you need, but um, what I would say is that per our experience and uh, our interaction so far with Brazilians, so far with Ghanaians, we've come to realize that Brazil is going to be one of the most hospitalized. Why am I using hospitalized? The most attractive when you want to have enjoyment, if you want to have fun, if you want to appreciate what is really uh, what we call rest you go for tourism is brazil we enjoy brazil and if we are enjoying brazil how do we get Ghanaians to brazil that is the question and i think that we with our experience we are taking Ghanaians through a very short distance uh, way or means to brazil we will go via accra straight to uh, Natal, which will be the destination. That will be our first point of call arriving in Brazil. Um, Natal is a small coastal t city out of within the, the territory where Ghana have been allocated. You know, we are playing Fortaleza and we play in the central part of Brazil, which is Brazil, which is the administrative capital for Brazil. So far, we think we have done our best. And we know always your best can never be enough for Ghanaians. You need to always do better of what you've always been doing. So we are promising Ghanaians and assuring them that we are going to give them the best offer, the best service, and the best hospitality in Brazil. You've mentioned very important points here. But for a lot of people out there, the only information that they have as we speak is that they register with your company for $100. As to how much more they have to pay, um, we still don't have other figures. Let's take it from the point where they have to pay $100. What are they paying the $100 for? Yes, um, we have advertised a package we call Fuleko. And Fuleko, uh, if you go to the Google, if you go to Google to Google Fuleko, you'll find out that Fuleko is an animal, Amadillo. Amadillo is an animal that have got three fingers. Brazilians are using this as their symbol, the mascot for the World Cup. Because everything about Amadillo is three. 
we have designed our package to make sure, even if it will affect our profits, to make sure that we also make our package three. So the three with three zeros, which is $3,000, which is our package that we are selling. People ask, is too cheap? Yes, it's too cheap. We are working according to a number. Because of our experience, we know the number we can accommodate in Brazil. We know the number we cannot. Even if, like mathematics, they said, if more, less divide. Mm -hmm. It means that the more you are getting the people, the less they pay. So if that is the case, we are selling our package for $3,000. And our target is 255 people. And that's what now that I'm telling you, we have got corporates, the corporate Ghana, who are almost buying that package. So it means that the individual people within the country who are also buying will maybe be over the number that we are looking at. So it means that we'll be looking at about 550 people or 500 and small number of people that will be going into Brazil doing two chartered flights. So if we are selling a package for $3,000 and you know Ghanaian mentality, Ghanaian, why? Because Ghanaians always pay last minute. So what do we do to entice them to buy the package? What do we do to inform them about the package that we have? What do we do to let them know and get the assurance that we are capable of doing the service or providing that service to them? So if I walk into your office today yeah, yeah. and I have $3,000 with me, I give you the $3,000, yeah. what does it do? You have your $3,000, we take your passports, we apply the, the Brazilian visa for you. We make sure that you have the three match tickets, which is Ghana versus uh, Germany, Ghana versus USA, and Ghana versus Portugal. Destination, Brazil. Our first point of call is Natal. You have four nights of stay accommodation in Natal. All our accommodation we've arranged is pairing. We pair the people. So we always advise people that if they have friends or they can bring their friends so that they can share the rooms together to make it cheaper. The mentality is hospitality. Brazil, we stay together, we move together, we understand each other as Ghanaians. So after getting this accommodation, you also have a transfer. Transfer that's moving between Natal to Fortaleza. In Fortaleza, Accommodation is not included in this package that we've announced. Why? In Brasilia, accommodation is not included in this package that we've announced. This is distances from Fortaleza. So we can tell you that the distance between Fortaleza and Natal is 40 minutes. We can do by road. Mm -hmm. By road, how much are you paying per, per pax as a supporter in a bus? We charge you $30. Then we take you to Fortaleza or Natal by bus. So that is the distance. It's 40 minutes, Fortaleza to Natal. Mm -hmm. Now, this is Brasilia. What is the distance between Brasilia and then Fortaleza? It's 2 hours 36 minutes. I hope you get a point. Mm -hmm. 2 hours 36 minutes. So this is the game between Ghana, Portugal playing in Brasilia, Ghana versus Germany playing in Fortaleza. Mm -hmm. You see, the reason why I was telling you that we will do flights between Fortaleza and Brasilia is that the journey is 2 hours 36 minutes within Brazil. Okay. And it can only be done maximum 30 hours if you are going by road. We will not want our supporters to be in crisis. This can be done by flight. And now the flight cost that we are getting from Brazil is the same as we are doing here in Accra Kumasi. It's cheaper. $150, $300, $200, be, depending on the uh, on the aircraft the type that you are using. Mm -hmm. And we understand what we want to do. So it's it left for us to decide whether we will do a bit expensive charter for the supporters or we go through the schedule. The schedule is an arranged one. You do a return. All flights, it's either you do a return or you do a one-way uh, to go to the destination. Now, this is for Teleza. So we come here. Distances from Brasilia. Uh, because Brasilia is the center. You see now, now Brasilia is the is the center. The distance between Brasilia and Natal, we don't need it because we will not be traveling between Natal and, and Brasilia okay. unless we get to Fortaleza. You get the point. Mm -hmm. So now we should focus on Natal. 
So let's look for the distance between Natal to Fortaleza, which I already told you in the last uh, mapping that it's 40, it's 40 minutes. minutes. 40 minutes, you can do it six hours by road. By road. Then I said, if you are sending a group, a large number traveling like that, you need to get them lunch on the way. So six hours maximum, we will get to Fortaleza. So that's Brazil will be the finest World Cup to be staged since we don't know of Russia. But I can tell you with my travel experience to Russia and Brazil, Brazil is more comfortable for you to be there, dependent based on the language. It's a Portuguese country, but they understand English a bit. As compared to Russia, whose their, 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 their language cannot be studied even in Ghana here. If you intend to do that, it will be difficult. We have got a very good hospitality package for you. Just come to our office, any of the branches across the country. We are ready to serve you. We will serve you, and we know you will come to Multi TV one day to tell them that it's, it was through you that I got to Brazil. I really enjoyed the services from African Origin Travels. We have always said that the positive sports experience you can only get from African Origin Travels. Origin Travel and Tours is also uh, sponsoring our coverage of the Chan tournament ongoing in South Africa and will be our partners too for the FIFA World Cup in Brazil. Sending your messages, one from Sharif Ahmed says, uh, uh, Good morning, Nat. Honestly, our boys are not good enough to win the Chan tournament because they lack the cutting edge up front. May the uh, soul of Kamala Dumont rest in peace. Nyimba Richmond Jr. says, The local black stars should fight hard like us now so that they can win the trophy. Kudos to the boys. And uh, Godwin Favor, Jemole says, Roger Federer all the way. Okay, uh, keep the messages coming in. Remember, you can reach me on my Facebook wall, Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. Let's also uh, talk about Sule Ali Montari, who plays his football for AC Milan. There's talk about how he could possibly make a move to Hull City and uh, reunite with his former manager at Sunderland, uh, Steve Bruce. Now, uh, Bruce will be seeking to reunite with uh, Sule and... Um, there's been a lot of speculation uh, going to suggest that Sule Ali Montari will move from the AC Milan squad. And also remember that he has targeted a £3.9 million pound swap uh, for uh, the Ghana player. Okay. Also, we go to uh, Black Stars defender Isaac Vossa, who's been named in Res Red Bull's uh, Salzburg squad for the cutout or the defender. Um, Sustained a serious knee injury in May last year and was estimated to keep him out of the game for at least six months. But the 25-year-old is behind uh, schedule in recovery. Now, the Red Bull Salzburg player says uh, he will train separately and will not be involved in the friendly matches against Zenit St. Petersburg and Sudanese, champion, uh, Sudanese champions Al Marek SC. From him, we also go to another defender, Jonathan Mensa, and he is also on the radar of uh, Olympiakos in Greece. Now, according to Go Ghana, uh, there are uh, indications that the UEFA Champions League campaigners have identified um, Jonathan Mensa and want to use his services. Mensa uh, has been the main man in the back for Evian this season after an early injury scare. Now, sources are hinting to the French League One side. Uh, sources. Uh, close to the French Ligue 1 side, say that there is a possibility he could be uh, sold at a fee of 5 million euros. And also, we uh, talk about a, a relatively unknown player, Ghana youth player, Thomas uh, Tay Pate. Uh, he's expressed satisfaction with his form for Real Mallorca in the Spanish Segunda Division. So, uh, uh, Tay Pate is playing his football with Mallorca in the uh, second division in Spain. Let's also go to Godfred Donsa, who um, made uh, the uh, Hellas Verona uh, bench, and um, the Ghanaian prodigy has been promoted to the first team of Syria side Hellas Verona. The 17 year old was in a new substitute. In the 1-0 defeat at the hands of AC Milan at the San Siro. Remember, it was uh, 
the man Mario Balotelli. Uh, he uh, got that goal for AC Milan. And, of course, that was uh, Coach Massimiliano Allegri's very first uh, uh, coach, uh, Clarence Seedorf's uh, first game in charge of the, uh, you know, of the AC Milan team. Now, uh, CAF has appointed Burkinabe officials for the uh, CAF Champions League clash against uh, their Liberian opponents. Now, um, Asante Koto will play hosts on February 9 at the Mabara Stadium in Kumasi uh, 2, uh, the... Uh, Barack Young controllers of Liberia in that game, and um, referee Bukari uh, Wedraugo and his compatriots from uh, Burkina Faso will be officiating the game. Drissa Sesuma and, of course, uh, uh, Nyanioba Uba and uh, Umaru Alain Wedraugo uh, will also be there. The match commissioner for the day will be Indoye Imbai from Senegal. And, uh, of course, uh, we go to uh, Malawi, where uh, the teams have uh, rescinded the decision. Now, Ma Malawi sides, uh, Silver Strikers and Mighty Wanderers, have had their bans for crowd violence reduced after an appeal. Now, um, while the Strikers' eight-month suspension has been decreased to, decreased to six months, Wanderers now have a four-match ban instead of five months. The Wanderers' original fine was uh, 1,620 U.S. dollars, and it remains the same. But Silver Strikers must now pay 8,470 uh, up from uh, 6,640. The teams were found guilty of failing to control their supporters at their league match on December 28. Also, we go to uh, South African President Jacob Zuma, and he has thrown his weight behind the Bafana Bafana, who were kicked out of the tournament. And uh, he also believes in the fact that coach uh, Gordon Eagleson is building a squad, therefore uh, must be given more time to put the team in shape. And uh, let's go to Esperance de Tunis of uh, Tunisia. And, of course, uh, former Netherlands World Cup captain Ruud Kroll has signed a three-year contract to coach Tunisian side Esperance de Tunis. So this also means that uh, Ghana's Harrison Affle will have to work under a new manager. Let's hope he continues to impress and, of course, Root Crawl will make him an integral part, an important part of, uh, you know, the uh, team. And also, um, Samuel Eto'o uh, uh, is threatening to leave Chelsea. Well, uh, I just guess that this could be, you know, uh, one of the uh, biggest jokes, especially when he's settling in. And uh, remember that he was able to uh, secure that win for Chelsea with all three goals coming from him and this was just on Sunday when Chelsea played against Manchester United at the Stamford Bridge. All right, so let's do some more stories here on Sports Today and Everton um, uh, have been speaking about the trial of um, Lacina Traore and of course uh, the boss uh, Roberto Martinez uh, hopes to conclude a low deal for Monaco striker Lancino, uh, Lancina Traore. It's a big game. AC Milan versus Udinese. And um, Emmanuel Ajimambedou will find himself play against uh, Suli Ali Montari. That surely is going to be a very, very interesting one indeed. Let's also take a look at the Coupe de France. Mons is playing Monaco. Bordeaux is playing Lille Rousse. And uh, Zure, Yizure will play uh, Lyon. Toulouse will play Moulin. And of course, Paris Saint-Germain play Montpellier. In an all-premiership uh, game, Auxerre play Dijon FC.
CO, and of course, uh, Plabenek play uh, Khan. Okay. Stanislav Warwinka, um, he is the man uh, to be looking out for after he defeated Djokovic. Let's see if he's able to win the men's title. That surely is going to be one big one. Okay, uh, time is up to do the um, moment of the day. And uh, guess what the moment of the day is? Well, the NBA player spending time with Michelle Obama. Uh, Michelle Obama, who is now 50 years old. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much for keeping uh, touch with us and uh, staying with us here on the show. Uh, Friday will be the next stop. Thanks so much. Uh, keep your messages uh, coming in, especially those celebrating the life of Komla Dumont. And uh, there is surely more on this channel. Remember, later today, there is the... Um, GFA TV show and of course the EPL highlights show as well uh, right here. Always keep it here. Uh, my name is Nathaniel Atoll and I have love for sport. I'm here today at the White House to find out why eating healthy can help you perform like a champion. Well, I eat fruits and vegetables every day because it gives me the energy I need to perform at the top of my game. Thanks, Dwayne. What about you, Ray? Drinking water is an important part of my pregame routine so I can stay focused and refreshed. And you can take it from me. Eating the right foods can help make you a better athlete. Oh! Thank you. Oh! oh. <laughs>